please welcome to the TEDx Sonoma County stage, Philip Coffold. All right, so I'm guessing pretty much everybody here is at least passingly familiar with virtual reality. It is kind of the newest, latest, shiniest, fanciest technology to kind of come out lately. And I bet it's on a lot of Christmas lists on top of that. Being a game developer, I'm sure, you know, for everybody else, I'm sure it can be seen as nothing more than a new way to play video games. But it's an amazing technology and it really has the potential to be a lot more. And, that's, and while I'm a game guy, I'm, again, I'm the technical lead for the game department at the Academy of Art. I gravitate towards video games, but there's a lot of other things that it's being used for. It's an amazing experience, but telling you about it doesn't really do anybody a whole lot of good. What I'd actually like to do is ask, who has never tried virtual reality? You people? So, how about you? Come on up. So, have a seat. I'm going to go ahead and have you put that on. And we can, t are you okay? <laughs> I'm just going to tighten it for you a little bit. Is that good? Okay. So, right here. Oh, that's it. And run. No, you're okay. Go ahead and sit, sit face forward. Okay, so, give it a minute. Okay, so take a look around for a second. It's just a lovely swing with some trees, nothing to be afraid of. All right, so go ahead and face forward. Oh, you have a disembodied body there. So, all right. So we're just gonna have a nice little swing. <laughs> and now we're just going to bring you back down to earth there. So as you can see, so, so did it feel like you're actually moving? Very much so. <laughs> you kind of get the butterflies in your stomach kind of fell out from underneath you. All right, let me help you take that off there real quick. All right, excellent. Thank you. Thanks. Anyway, that's very much the power and excitement of VR. As you could see, not necessarily the best looking trees. They couldn't cast shadows just because it takes up too, many, too much processing power. Kind of decent mountains, but you're very much transported to the place and it very much does feel like you're in this world. It's a very powerful and very visceral experience. So I just wanted to talk a little bit, what exactly is virtual reality? So technically it means any computer, artificially computer generated world that can be experienced and interacted with. Uh, technically, any video game ever has been virtual reality, even if you're just playing it on a screen or your phone or what have you. It can be outer space, it can be a maze you're running through, it can be just about anything. What it has actually come to refer to are any experiences where the user uses special equipment to completely immerse themselves in that world. And the complete immersion is the important part. Most of these experiences are designed to completely block out whatever's going on around you. This is in contrast to some other technology you may or may not have heard about. This is augmented reality, which has also made a bit of a splash this year. Uh, on the developer side, that's the Microsoft HoloLens. On the right there, that's actually Pokemon Go, which some... <laughs> so augmented reality is different in that you're actually experiencing the real world still. You're still seeing what you're seeing 
we just put a layer over it. I could be looking at you and see zombies or throw spiders on you or, I don't know why I'm being so cruel, but that's the sort of thing that you could actually do. So virtual reality deals uh, with the head-mounted display. This is the visor or visors that actually go over your face. There are others, but these are the big three right now. Uh, the Vive, the Morpheus, and the Oculus Rift. And what actually is going on inside of those, each eye sees a different image. A uh, stereoscopic image, and as your head moves, it tracks where you're moving and changes the image appropriately. It can be a little scary at first, like all new technology can be. Maybe seem a little bit dystopian, like you're completely cut off from the real world. Maybe corporate control, I don't know. But. And if you've ever actually seen anybody in it, it's a little bit strange. It can almost be looking like somebody with an affliction. <laughs> if you've ever been walking down the street and been walking next to somebody talking on a Bluetooth headset, you don't necessarily know if they're actually talking on the phone or if they just blew a fuse. And virtual reality is not entirely different, but what, <laughs> what is actually going on inside is a little bit of a different story. So you could actually be defending your castle with a bow and arrow from a bunch of uh, enemies. You could be... Da -da -da. You could actually be painting in 3D space with an entirely new medium, where instead of a canvas, you can actually paint, walk around, see what you're doing. Or you could be training to become a wizard. So anybody here ever want to go to Hogwarts? Because you are totally going to be able to go to Hogwarts. So, in reality, uh, no pun intended, virtual reality is really nothing new. Everything from panoramic paintings to stereoscopic photographs have all been an attempt to further immerse ourselves into art or fictional worlds. And in the 20th century, we've had numerous attempts to use film, television, that sort of medium to actually bring ourselves even further in. And even of late, uh, start you know probably in the 90s, we've had uh, attempts to commercialize that, everything from the Game Boy to different pods. But for the most part, what's actually been available has either been too expensive or just didn't work well enough to actually give you a comfortable experience. Which brings us to what we have currently, which is, again, the headsets. These are all tethered to a computer. And we have the mobile ones, which are actually very interesting, too, because it makes it much more accessible to other people. The one on the right, in particular, is the one I want to talk about. This is the Google Cardboard. So the New York Times actually distributed 1.6 million of these in its paper to its readers. This actually makes it the most widely distributed virtual reality platform to date, and it costs about $10. It works with your phone. You just download an app. But that actually brings me not so much to the technology, but what it can actually be used for. We've been talking a lot about how to see the world differently, how to experience it differently. And this is where virtual reality plays a role in that. So this is actually an image uh, from the New York Times, the Fight for Fallujah documentary. This was uh, one of the first 360-degree virtual reality documentaries actually shot in an active war zone. So literally, you can actually feel like you're in the middle of a firefight. A company called Scopic did one called Refugees that uh, documented the plight of the Syrian refugees. Again. Rather than just seeing this on the news, rather than just reading about it on the web or in the paper or even seeing a photograph, you can actually be placed inside of the camp. And I would not even begin to suggest that it's the same as being there. But it certainly gives you a deeper understanding of what these people are actually going to on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, these experiences for me are very powerful. When I was younger, uh, I read a comic book by the name of Mouse, which was a story of an older Holocaust survivor telling a story to his younger son. And it was a deeply personal story, and it actually changed the way I looked at the world, because to me, these things no longer happen to people, they happen to persons. And I think that sort of uh, distinction comes across in these sorts of things. Additionally, we're also seeing the use in medicine. Uh, they're actually finding that putting people in virtual reality in hospitals actually measurably reduces the amount of pain medication they need. Pain is something very insistent on its own importance and with some distraction, whether it's actually watching a movie or maybe seeing the dolphins swim by or throwing snowballs at penguins, you can kind of get away from that. Same thing with the dentist office. I got an awesome dentist, but 
I could use a little distraction. <laughs> so this is probably one of the more interesting ones, and actually one of the most effective ones to date, is the use in treating PTSD. Uh, what it does is it basically allows for the sufferers, the people who have gone through combat, to re-experience what they went through in a safe, controlled environment. Still being studied, uh, very much funded by the military for, of course, obvious reasons. But at the same time, they're seeing a lot of promise, uh, and it actually reduces the way the brain responds to these things over time. You don't get quite of a, as radical of an emotional response over time, and it actually is helping them to live normal lives again. So this is where uh, VR basically is right now. Uh, it's obviously not everybody's using it, not everybody has it. It's very cost prohibitive right now, even with the mobile, uh, mobile versions. I wanted to make a prediction as to where this will become more common. And I think it is our friend, professional sports. Uh, the NBA and the Olympics have already done 360 degree experiences where you can actually uh, be, it feels like you're there. And I think uh, eventually you will see broadcast by the NFL or the NBA where you can be courtside or you can be behind home plate or you can be on the 50 yard line. And maybe with the push of a button, you can be up in the bleachers or behind the goalposts or wherever you want to be in the house. Sports, people spend a lot of money on sports. I think that's something that people will actually embrace VR to take advantage of. The future, this is some obvious ones. Museums, media, uh, business, virtual shopping centers, training. People are already working on these. These will become a thing in the future, but uh, one of the other presenters, I believe, said, you can't escape your own perspective, which I think is a great statement. And virtual reality can't completely change that. But I wanted to show you at least one way in which you can. This is one of the most ex interesting experiments I've seen. Man and a woman sit in the same room back to back, but they have cameras mounted on the VR. So the man is seeing the woman's perspective, the woman is seeing the man's perspective. And they communicate how they actually move, what they do. So you can actually see what it's like to actually live in somebody else's body. Again, a very interesting change of perspective on there. Uh, a machine to be another, if anybody would like to look that up on that. It'll never replace travel, but it can certainly expose you to other cultures, and certainly for education, this could be a great thing. You could potentially place a camera in the middle of Shinjuku or Rome or Damascus or any, no, any number of places to give people a sense of what it's like to actually live in another place. I think historical reenactment could be an amazing thing. As time goes by, as we lose people with living memory of events, history becomes more and more abstract. It would easily be possible to recreate the moon landing, an obvious one, maybe the first Continental Congress to actually give you a better sense of what happened. The one in the upper left is actually from the Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, Washington DC rally. And especially this year, that's not an accident that I put that one in there. So it's an amazing speech, an amazing moment in American history. But this doesn't necessarily give you the perspective of what it was like to be there, whereas we could actually do that. I could put you in the audience. You could be next to somebody visibly moved. Maybe you're 100 yards away. We can alter the audio so that you're actually hearing it the way you would have heard it if you were actually there. I think, especially in terms of civil rights, finding out what it's like to be somebody who was discriminated against, what it was like maybe to have somebody screaming at you when you're just trying to go to school. There are numerous ways to create new kinds of empathy. So uh, the one I kind of want to round out a little bit with here is one I feel very passionately about, and that's education. So this is the uh, picture of the School of Athens. So I don't think it's particularly controversial to say that the public school system is kind of a mess right now with numerous, numerous problems, to, like I could literally do an entire TED day on all that. <laughs> um, but it can address some problems. So once again, one of the most important elements of VR is how transportative it is. It puts you in a new place. Uh, this is actually a very lovely school, and I kind of wish I'd gone here 
myself when I was younger. Um, but not every school can be like this. Not every public school is. Rural schools have a lot of difficulty with funding. And certainly those need to be addressed. But in terms of a learning environment, this could be where your kid goes to kindergarten. Literally, well not literally, but that's bad use of literally, we talked about that earlier. <laughs> Virtually would be a much better word. <laughs> but it's surprising what a different environment can do like that. I had one student create a game where you fall through the trap door into a dungeon, it's kind of dark and dimly lit, and you have to go solve puzzles to do that. And I had one person tell me that when he dropped down in there, he was in the environment, it relaxed him, which is not what we were going for, but a very interesting reaction nonetheless. But it kind of made me think, okay, what happens if you do take somebody who's maybe not coming from the best background, they're in a rough situation, the school is not great, well suddenly all the distractions from the outside are gone. The teacher could have much more control over what goes on in terms of the learning process. What the lessons would be like, nobody really knows what that's like yet. Uh, just trying to take one thing and translate it into another never works. We're finding that out a lot with video games. What we used to know for design does not translate into virtual reality very well. And certainly the example we all give was a film. The first films were, of course, plays. Or some of the first films were plays because that's what they knew of narrative structure. It took them a while to actually develop uh, movies into their own language. And I think for education, certainly, again, the obvious, oh, look, you're on the sun. Now we can learn about the sun. You want to learn about World War II? Maybe don't put them on Normandy, but certainly some place that you could talk about that. But I think actually trying to teach somebody math. Again, no more distractions. The guy next to you throwing spitballs, he can't throw spitballs any, at you anymore because he's in VR too and he can't see you. It all works out well. <laughs> but it's real, this is really just an idea. This has a long way to go. It's very much in its infancy. Um, I'm very passionate about it myself, and for those of you who are artists or designers or just tinkerers or anything, I encourage you to get involved with this. There's a lot of truly amazing work being done, and there's, a, uh, there's no reason that we can't try out any and all ideas. Um, and I hope you do. Thank you very much.